So we are gonna just do one thing for this video and then the rest will be different videos when I'm making this, that, or the other. Uh, let's put on this clamp that goes to the front of the intake manifold here. This actually attaches directly to this Bosch throttle body. It's actually another thing that Racework sells. They actually sell these race, um, not Raceworks. Raceworks sells these Bosch throttle bodies on their website, so you can go check that out too. Again, check out the links below. You'll be buying directly from TR Performance for these parts, and they'll be shipping directly to you. So again, this is a Bosch throttle body that I painted. What I'm going to do is use this adapter that allows you to put on one of these three and a half inch clamps. They also have one that does three inch. I chose three and a half because 82 millimeters is close to three and a half inches. Um, so yeah, really uh, 75 millimeters would be three inches. Uh, three and a half inches would be 87 millimeters, I believe, yes. Um, so it's close. Uh, it's a little oversized, but I'd rather be oversized than undersized when it comes to something like this. So I'll take it out of the box here. So here's everything that will come in that kit. It will come with a total of four O-rings. I'll show you where they need to go. It'll come with these four bolts, obviously this clamp that needs to go on there. And then it'll come with these little standoffs that go on the backside, which I'll show you also. Another thing I'm gonna make sure to do for all these series is show you the part and do this because we all know looking up part number sucks. This makes it a lot easier. So here's the exact part number and exactly what I'm using here today for that clamp. This makes it super easy for you guys too. If you have an iPhone and put it up to the screen right now, um, you can see it'll allow you to scan this, or if you got an iPhone, this will allow you to see that part number and you'll be able to uh, actually get this pretty easily because with an iPhone, what it does is it'll scan that and go, hey, would you like to open it up and take you right to this website, which it will. Uh, again, I'll list down below a tracking and it'll give you a slight discount too to get it from TI Performance, again, right there, uh, to get these parts. So really, really neat. So let's go ahead and get this on the car. But to do that, we actually have to take off the throttle by as it sits now because these bolts going through are utilized by those bolts right there. So what I'm doing first is just kind of sitting these on there and then this just kind of sits over top. Now, before you put that on though, you need to put on two of these O-rings. You want to kind of oil grease these up so this slides over nicely, doesn't pinch it or anything. So again, some oil, uh, grease or lubricant, whichever you can find. And there is two different size O-rings in here. So I want you guys to be able to see this. So there's two little tiny ones and then there's two bigger ones. So see these little guys and then there's ones that are slightly bigger. These bigger ones will slide down over this area here. These small ones will go in these grooves here. Again, big ones fit in here. These small ones go in the grooves over here, just to give you guys a heads up. So I've oiled up the O-rings now. Again, I'm going to put the standoffs back on just to make this a little bit easier because I'm not gonna actually install it yet. I just wanna sit this down on it. So this slides over top. And yeah, it's hard to do with one hand. Let me get my other hand free here. This is what it's gonna look like when done. Another thing I wanna mention, guys, this Bosch throttle body, I did paint, if you haven't seen my past videos, I did have to paint this throttle body to get that look. So normally it'd be silver. I just wanted this all blacked out look. Use an adhesion, adhesion promoter and then painted this. I didn't want a powder coat because electronics taking apart if it didn't go back properly, blah, blah, blah. So if you see the difference in color, that's why. But what I wanted to show you, this is what it should look like. Now, one thing I did notice, and again, every car is gonna be different. Every, you know, it's no matter what you have, depending on your adapter, it's gonna be different. These bolts were just slightly too long uh, they were 65 millimeter so I had to order 60 just to get a little bit shorter so it didn't bottom out I could probably drill and tap this out a little bit more but I didn't want to take that chance so I am just waiting right now to um, get my new bolts and I'll fully clamp it down but the next thing we can do here is I just want to show you guys there's the groove there's the slots for these here what you're gonna do is put those other o-rings on and they'll slide on there um, I guess we don't really need to show that at this moment in time but I can at least show you guys the parts here uh, where did I put the clamp at? Where did I even put it at? I think I put it down. Here we go, Jimmy. There we go, boy. Just put that up here. So those O-rings here will go on that. And then this will just... You only need one side of this too. Since you're only using one of these, you don't need both sides of that clamp. The other side will weld, which is kind of nice in my case because it gives me an extra in case I make a boo-boo. So I have an extra one as a spare uh, for the future. Now I will say too, this does have Raceworks stamped in it. This is nothing against Raceworks. I just didn't see the point in having Raceworks with Raceworks there. I think that looks cleaner just on the clamp itself. Um, yeah, just didn't see the need for redundancy there. So you can rotate it if you don't want to see that up there or you can keep it up there. Um, but yeah, so that's how it's going to look when done. And then I plan on powder coating this um, also. So pretty pumped about this going on the car itself. And if I haven't, I thought I showed the part number for that. So let me pull it up here. This is for the three and a half inch. There's the part number for the three and a half inch, by the way, for this clamp. And again, O-rings and comes with both sides. 
Next up is these oil filter housings. What's nice is I have a factory Toyota filter housing here and I have the Raceworks filter housing. Let's flip that upside down. And one looks smaller than the other, but really the box on this one is just shorter, so it's kind of deceiving. They're the same size. That is a factory 2JZ GTE oil filter housing. This is a Raceworks oil filter housing. Now from the top, they have the same amount of drain ports. So let's do it from here. Drain ports, they have the same amount of drain ports here. Uh, it has a Viton style O-ring that can be uh, removed, reused, so on and so forth. You can also take this whole diaphragm apart so you can inspect everything inside, of course, and clean that with a brake cleaner. It comes with the tool to do so. It has these little notches, take it, spin it around so it falls in the holes. Or do this with one hand because it's trying to spin the whole thing. Come on, there we go. And now you hold that along with holding the bottom of this and it comes off. So you put like an open-ended wrench on this it actually comes with a little nut to take off or hold on to the bottom side so you actually don't mess up the finish. So it comes with an aluminum piece here that you can put on the bottom of it to hold it. Again, you can also use this to take it off when it's on the car. So if it's on and it got a little tighter than you should have, you can use this to get it off. On top of it, it's also very knurled here, the very top edge here and then all around here. Unlike a smooth filter, which we all know what that's like trying to get this off, your hands are greasy, it's a pain in the ass. This will make life 10 times easier to get on and off, and it's lifetime. Never have to buy another filter again. Filters are cheap, don't get me wrong, but the biggest thing for me is, especially with the build engine now, is inspecting every time I change the oil, every time. This will show the contamination, I'll be able to check for metal, things of that nature, and then I go, okay, I know everything's good, seal it back up. You can cut these open and go through the, um, the paper filter that's in there, but this is a much better design. You're able to see it all. Now again, this bolts right up to the factory housing, so you don't have to do anything. They sell it directly on their website. So here it is. That is it, believe it or not, is actually SAE too. I had to double check it, they had it on their website. Um, I was like, man, there's no way. I thought it'd be metric because they have a couple metric, but no, the 2JZ uses SAE uh, thread pitch for this, which is kind of crazy. It is a 30 micron filter. Now, I know it's gonna be asked, Ryan, what does Toyota use? And I'm gonna be honest, I am not sure. I'm not sure what the micron rating is for it. I'm gonna try and look it up online if I can and see what the micron rating is to kind of give some feedback. You obviously don't wanna to go too small because an oil can't pass through. This isn't like fuel um, where you wanna run a 10 or six micron filter to capture all those particles and stuff. Oil is a lot thicker, so you don't wanna go that small, but you wanna make sure you catch all the metal and you don't want it going back into your fresh engine, your head and messing up your cans. I kind of talked about this in the last video, but it does come with this tool um, to actually remove the internals also. So you'll spin that one way or the other uh, to actually remove the internals uh, of this. And again, it has the amount of drains there. I can't remember if it's lefty loosey or righty tighty to get it off. Um, I would assume it is the opposite just so it doesn't back itself out when you're installing or putting it on and off from the car, I would assume. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll have to find that out. And again, it does come with this tool also. This allows you to, if you can't get it off by hand, Flip it over, comes with a little tool, so you don't have to use a socket that you have, and it's low profile, so it fits directly over that, doesn't mar up the filter either, and boom, you can use that to get it off if you've over-tightened it, but realistically, you don't need to tighten it that much, and with these knurled ends, you should be able to get this off by hand. Unless it's so covered in oil you can't, then this does come in handy, and I do like that they do include this. Again, this all comes in that kit with this part number right here. Pretty awesome product, again. Uh, they do have one other uh, insert for it if you run a much thicker oil there's another insert you can use that has a different micron rating I believe it's 60 microns um, this way depending on the oil weight you can change it out really neat product so one other thing guys I wanted to go over were these Raceworks AN wrenches um, it goes down from 3 the whole way up to 20 which this was the biggest deal to me most of them don't do 20 and if they do they don't have this end so this is the biggest part for me if you see all of them have a closed end on them so when you're tightening things up or you're trying to install them you can use this side to actually hold it and spin it around you don't have to worry about slipping off from this side um, this is great for putting the hose together obviously it's not great if you're installing it because then the wrench will be stuck on it but this is great for actually putting the hoses together smart design I like this and I like that they're color coded so if it's up here, it's easy to see what is what. You can see here, these all have a bunch of colors of the same. These ones are just the, all the same color. Uh, well, what, silver and then black. These, each one has its own distinguished color and I like that. So if I'm coming in here, it's not just about 
the number, I know that every time purple is 10. I know that it's 10 each and every time. Uh, the finish on these are a lot nicer too, a lot smoother, where these are like really sharp edged and stuff. Again, just very nice setup. I love this. I've never seen that before. That's new to me. I like that for when I'm installing. I can't wait to try that out. Again, I'll show you that in a video when the time comes as I'm making new fuel lines and everything for the Supra, which got picked up, so it's no longer here. Uh, it's at paint currently, so when I get it back, I'm gonna make new fuel lines, which I wanted to speak on too, because I have the old ones here, and I'm gonna sell them. Before I show and sell them here, I'm gonna actually get the links out here and give you guys exact links. So even if you guys don't wanna buy my stuff, I 100% understand, but I wanna give you guys the links that you need to work for my setup, which works with the um, radium fuel filter. Now again, these soft lines, there's a little bit of give and take, so, I have slack in there, um, so this will give you enough room if you think like, well, should I add a little bit more, take more out, and don't. I have plenty of slack in there already built into it, like an extra three or four inches, so unless your car is somehow magically way longer or this or that, this will work for you, uh, so do not worry. But I'll get these laid out on the floor, get a tape measure out, uh, and then get it all measured for you. And the reason all this stuff was on when I was removing it, I didn't want to mess up the fittings uh, if they were laying on the ground when I was taking the line out. I think some of them got a little scraped up, but I'll let you know what I want for these. These are Viton line, uh, old, uh, not old, but uh, race flux lines. So they are ED5 safe. These aren't just regular cheap lines, but I'll get that out and talk to you guys about it then. And like I have for everything else, here is the part number for those. Just makes it easy for you guys. Check it out. Um, again, really, really nice setup. So next thing I'm doing is I'm using one of these um, 6AN orb to a 6AN female. And the reason I'm using this, I wanna adapt this here directly to my fuel pressure regulator. Now, I did this on my wife's car here. So if you look here using the radium, you, I can't zoom in there, but down there, right off of it using the same fitting, is the flex fuel sensor. And then from the bottom flex fuel sensor, the whole way back is one line. It makes it a lot easier. Um, I've always really liked this. So this literally just screws into the bottom. And I, I am all about less fittings or more, so I try to do as little as possible. Um, so that just goes right in the bottom. I have to tighten it up here. And then this could screw onto it. Now, this adds weight. My buddy Tony over at Stan Stagger Media, he has this and he has it hanging like this. I am not sure how I feel about all that weight off of that. Cause I mean, that is, see if that's even, there we go. That is a lot of weight hanging off of that and putting, you can just see it there. That is a lot of weight to hang off that one fitting off that. I don't like that. Um, this, this adds a ton of weight to it. So I'm just afraid that it's gonna cause me problems versus if I just get the fittings like these, I just need a 6A inversion of something like these. Uh, these are some leftover Red Horse ones I have, but this is something I'm looking at. For something like this, this slips over the ends, kind of like this did here, it slips over the ends and turns into an A and fitting, but these are extremely light. This barely weighs anything. You put one here and here, and it gets rid of this. Now, this is awesome because it's a bypass. Now, it's a low pressure side, so do I really need it? I've had it for years now, but it's just super cool to have. Like, it just, it really is super cool. I'm just afraid with that added extra weight um, that that's gonna be detrimental, especially in a car that's banging gears having all that weight hanging off of here, is that gonna be detrimental to this snapping off? I don't know. Again, you got sensor hanging out of it. Every little bit of weight is just more on it. Uh, so I'm just curious if I should do that. I wanna hear back from my buddy Tony first uh, and go from there. I also went ahead and pre-thread in two other fittings here. This has a radium fitting in the side. This is an orb fitting uh, that goes into this from Radium Engineering that I've had for a while now, did it on her car. And then one of their full flow fittings here. Love how that just wraps around. Um, this is a 10A in fitting, and then one of their straight 10A in fittings that'll come over to the catch cam. Now the part numbers for those 10A in fittings are right here. So right there is the 90 degree fitting. And here is a straight fitting. Again, they're just A in fittings, but that at least gets you straight to the part numbers to make it as easy as possible. Again, that sits in there perfect, will shoot straight over. And then that'll go straight into this catch cam, which I just swapped out these titanium bolts I had I had the standard like polished ones in there. I wanted to put black ones in and they'll go straight into those uh, 10 a and fittings there. Uh, and then I've got titanium bolts to bolt it in. This is something I had the guys up in New York make. So this is a one-off piece. I just, I've had probably six catch cans now. I'm like weird. I just, I love catch cans. I love different designs for catch cans. I know, stupid. I, I know, I know, I know. But this is something I really wanted, so had to make it, I'm pretty pumped for that. But the lines will come straight over, so it'll be a straight 10A in line from here and here and straight on over. Makes it super simple. Now, the other thing I do is these check valves for the brake booster. Here's what I had on before from Racetronics. This one's fine. 
Let's see how big it is. It's very bulky. Look at the difference in this. Raceworks versus Racetronics. How much smaller that is. I love that look a lot better. Again, it's just a vacuum check valve, so it doesn't need to be anything crazy. I have one from Red Horse on hers, and it's even bigger. Look how long this is. Can you even see it? It's massive. And it was just, it was too much. Uh, there's no need for that. So this is all you really need for it to work. I love that. It's much smaller. Um, yeah, and this is how I did it. So I did a eighth inch MPT to an extreme 90 degree off female to female. This is 6 a.m. male to male. And then it comes up like this and it'll go to a line that goes directly into my brake booster, which obviously I don't have on it yet, but love that check valve for that. Let's get you for here, guys. There is the part number for that. I'm gonna finger out of the way so you guys can scan it if necessary. That is the check valve part number. Pretty cool piece. All right, guys, so I said about getting you, y'all, some measurement here. Now, you don't measure from end to end of these fittings um, because the hose actually sits somewhat inset in. So this one here would be 32 inches. So this hose here specifically, this is what goes from the front of the fuel rail down into the uh, fuel filter itself to the radium fuel filter. Now there's slack in this, um, so don't worry. And again, this doesn't have to be perfectly taut or anything like that, just the way it's ran. But 32 uh, inches is exactly the hose length you'll need. This will work for pretty much any fuel filter down that area, but this works specifically for the radium fuel filter with their mount and everything that sits in that specific location. Now for the next line here, this is again, this is the feed line. So we'll go to the next one here, which is this one. Okay, Oop. as I step on that, let's sit this one here. This is where it gets a little tough. I almost need someone, it's not gonna be perfectly taut and I wanna get as straight as possible. Because right now it's sitting at 105. So what I'm gonna do is this. Sit this down, I'm gonna sit this like this. I apologize if you can hear my kids inside. So that's like that. We're gonna, I'm gonna crab walk this thing down. All right. Just so I can make sure the line stays taut. Do that. And at the very end here, yeah, it's 105 inches for the big feed line here. So for this feed line and this feed line, the big one here, this goes directly from the powerhouse racing, um, excuse me, from the powerhouse racing uh, feed at the actual tank to the bottom of the radium uh, fuel filter there. Sorry, just trying to make sure. Those use two 45 degree fittings. This uses, for the short one, uses one 120 degree and then one straight fitting. Both are 8 a.m. There's nothing else you ever need to really use on Super unless you have a drag car. You can use 10 a.m., but I'm still, there's a whole thing I can go into that, but I'm not going to go into that right now. So that's the feed. Again, you guys can review the video there to get those. Now, let's do the return side. So this little guy here comes directly off the back side of the radium direct mount fuel pressure regulator. Uh, it's just a small little hose here. It's a straight fitting with a 45. This 45 then goes to a flex fuel sensor out. So that is eight inches. Well, actually, let me take it back. Eight and a half, or sorry, let me take it back there. Seven and a half inches, I apologize. So this is exactly seven and a half inches of hose here. Now, it depends on what you're using or not. Uh, that directly, so that would attach to this guy. So this would be at the top here. This would be at the radium fuel filter, or fuel pressure regulator, and this would come down like so. So it'd be like that, sit back here. It sits something like that up against the body. Okay, so it'd be like this, because the body actually kind of tilts down. And then this will go into the next straight 6A in fitting, which I'll show you that line. So again, seven and a half inches for this. It is one straight fitting and one 45 degree fitting. Then it would go into the powerhouse racing overflow for the ED5 sensor here, uh, which uses uh, two 6A in fittings on both sides. So yeah, let me show you the next one. And that's it. That's how simple the setup is. Let's see where we're at here. Let's try to get as close as we can. Ish. I'm gonna crab walk it down. All right, hold it there. Hope you guys like looking at my butt. And come down here. That comes out to 118 inches for this line. So this is your other 6AN uh, return line. It uses one straight fitting and one 45 degree fitting. This goes directly, the 45 goes up to the radium hanger. The straight fitting goes um, to the actual uh, 85 sensor itself. So that's all you need, guys. Uh, I hope this helps. I'm gonna be selling this. Uh, I'm gonna post it up online. I'm not gonna give a price here, so I'll post it up on Facebook and Instagram. I wanted to go ahead and start making some of the fuel 
lines here again. I got rid of my old ones. I want to do some new ones. Do I really need to? No. Do I want to? Absolutely, because you guys know I love making AN fittings and lines. So again, this is for the feed line. This is 8AN. Again, this is their full flow design. So if you see this here, see how the fitting itself has no neck down there. Really like the look of that too. But it has typical style, so it's a collar style. So what you'll do is take this hose. Sorry, my voice is still crackling. I am still trying to get over the sickness. It is killing me inside, I'm not gonna lie. All right. Do that and spin it on to it bottoms out. There is like a little collar area inside of there. It's hard to see, but there's like a little lip in there where it'll bottom out on. Now, when it comes to this stuff, I usually use some type of lube to put these together. So you can put it in, um, but I recommend using something so as it goes in, it, it, it spins really nicely. Because uh, what will happen is, as you go down, you usually put blue tape right here. What will happen is you'll notice the hose start to actually back out because there's so much force that it actually pushes it the backside out of it. Uh, so by putting a little bit of lubricant, it helps it spin freely to go through the uh, rubber, the Viton line that's inside of here, uh, and keep it together so it doesn't actually back out. Just helps a little bit. You can use like regular oil, but Earl's makes this stuff that is specific for assembling uh, AN fittings. And it keeps it again from gouging up and having that problem. So that's what I plan on using. And then we're gonna come over here to my clamp and uh, we'll go from there. What I'm gonna do here, guys, I've got my clamp already in here. I put this inside of this here and we're gonna tighten it up some. So make sure it sits in there nicely. You want it to stick out a little bit. So if you can see there, it'll stick out just a smidge. See if I can actually zoom in on this. There we go. So it's sticking out just a smidge out of there. Once you get it all lined up, just tighten it up there so it doesn't spin. Good. Now, what we're gonna do next here is put a little bit of oil, whatever this stuff is. I'm not even sure, I just I assume some type of lubricant they offer. Nothing crazy, I'm not gonna go too insane, but just enough so it'll slide on there and then just wiggle it in the hole here. Damn, my voice is crackling and popping today. It's terrible. I just feel like crap. Now usually, I don't even have it in the vise for this part. I usually just hold it in my hand, put it together. Um, but just so you guys can see it, because if not, I wouldn't be able to show you guys. So go as far as I can with my hand. All right, now from here, uh, what you're gonna do is put a wrench on this end here. Uh, you can use an adjustable or you can use a uh, open-ended wrench. For this, some of these ends are different sizes. So they call it like an A and B nut size. So this is most likely a B nut size because anything that is at a 45, 90, anything of that nature, usually won't fit onto this. They just, I don't know why, that's just how the Army Navy fittings are. These sides are slightly different. Poison Cates, here's an eight. An eight would fit on this. As you can see there, fits on that, but will not fit on this. A and B nut sizing, not sure why they do that, but they do. So what I'm gonna do here is grab my handy dandy adjustable. And I like using the adjustables that kind of clamp around it just because it keeps me from slipping off. Damn, my voice keeps crackling like I'm a teenage boy. It's horrible. And then we're just gonna spin this around. You can see I'm not putting, I'm using literally one finger to do this. As you can see, we're going around and around. So it's nothing that crazy. Sorry, I just don't wanna, just trying to see. More than anything, I'm just trying to see here so I don't hurt anything. And how much more? Again, you don't wanna bottom these out either. It's the other thing you don't wanna do. So you wanna keep going, 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 and right there. Boom, right there. So take that off. You can probably hear my kids inside too, having fun with my wife, AKA screaming. So, I wanted to do this all in one video clip, but that is what it looks like when all said and done. That's my 45 degree fitting uh, for my 8 AN feed. This will go back to the tank, and then the other side is another 45 8 AN that will go up to the radium fuel filter. Pretty nice little piece. I love the way this looks. So that at least gets that done for now. I obviously have to do uh, the 6 AN hose yet, and then I'll obviously have to do this 20 AN. Look at the size of this. Massive, uh, and these awesome fittings. These things are absolutely sick. So I'll be doing that in another video again. My voice is getting worse. I'm kind of done talking, getting super, super close, loving this setup. I'm just pumped, guys. So thank you very much for tuning in today. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, and again, if you want to purchase these products down below, I have the link, click on it, helps me out, sends you right where you need to go and uh, makes life a lot easier for y'all. Thank you guys very much and I'll talk to you later. Peace.
Oh, 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 oh,